Hey kids, have you ever heard of the hit game Among Us? Among Us. Oh, of course you have. Well, have you ever wanted to be the imposter in real life? Well, now you can with the Ursatz M10. Or at least that was the idea. Yeah, we're getting into that today. So for those of you who are uninformed, the Ersatz M10 was this attempt by the Germans during the Battle of the Bulge to make 10 Panther tanks look like M10 Wolverines. There was only one issue with this idea. The Panther and the M10 are pretty much polar opposites. <laughs> and we are about to break down every single point that makes them that. So one thing that you really couldn't disguise on this vehicle was the scale of it. Compared to the M10, the Panther is massive. So immediately that would kind of be a red flag to anyone on the side of the road. That is of course assuming that the other details we're about to talk about haven't already alerted you that something is wrong. Now one of the areas where this vehicle fails the hardest is honestly the suspension, because they really couldn't take the time to rebuild the suspension to look like an M10 Wolverine, so they just used the standard double torsion bar interleaving road wheel suspension, as opposed to the M10 Wolverine's horizontal volute spring suspension, which is completely different. And with the fact that most American training films at the time were telling the soldiers to look for the interweaving suspension on a German tank, this probably would have came off as an immediate problem to any guys at the side of the road. Now the turret is one of my favorite places on this vehicle just because of how much of a disaster it is. So... In order to make it look more like an M10 Wolverine, you can't have that huge cupola on the top of the turret. So they decided to just take a flippin' torch and cut it off. Well, the problem is they didn't add any extra periscopes in its place when they removed it, so this effectively made it where the commander couldn't see when the hatches were closed. And the hilarity of it is, is in spite of trying to disguise it like an open-top vehicle, the hatches still open upward, which would have it where when you pull up to a checkpoint, if they're asking to see you as the commander, you have to open the hatches, which all of a sudden they're going to be wondering how there are hatches on an open-topped vehicle. And the hilarity of it is, is this is only one of the issues with the turret. Another issue with it is the fact that they completely did not disguise the back of it. Well, they did, but also didn't. The bottom half of the back of the turret is disguised. However, the upper half isn't. So the Germans couldn't just add a plate onto the upper rear of the turret because that would interfere with the, with the hatch at the back. So instead of trying to figure out another way to disguise it, they just left it open. So if an American soldier is walking around behind the vehicle and if he happens to look up, which he certainly will, he's going to be kind of confused when he sees a standard Panther term inside of this supposed M10 turret. And then, of course, hilariously enough, another issue comes to mind, which is the gun mantlet. So, apparently the SS were like, No, you can't take my machine gun. So, instead of actually covering up the coaxial machine gun, it's just exposed. Y you can still just see the hole where it shoots through. Well, this kind of opens up a really big question. How does an M10 Wolverine have a coaxial machine gun when it doesn't? Makes you think. The hull is another issue where things really begin to get comical. So, they added this huge plate on the front that wraps down to look like the transmission housing on the M10. You know, kind of clever, kind of clever. The one problem is, is that... Again, the SS were like, no, my machine gun! 
So, there's this door on the front of the hall, which slides open, or more accurately, falls open, and behind it is just the Panther Hall machine gun, just in its ball mount, which... Hmm... I don't remember the M10 Wolverine having a random access door on the front. Kind of strange. <laughs> Another particularly comical element of the hall is the fact that the fenders on the front weren't changed. Which, German fenders don't really look much like American tank fenders. And German headlights certainly don't, because they left that on there too. I mean, they went through all this work to disguise the front and they're just like, eh, that'll do. However, the front is only part of the story. The back is where things definitely get... strange. So instead of rerouting the exhaust downward, which would actually be a pretty big brain move, to where it would look like the actual M10 exhaust, they kind of just left the standard Panther exhaust on it. So the fumes exit the back, real high up. Which is not how any M10 operates. So that's gonna be kind of odd. There's also the fact that unlike the M10 where it has a small little overhang at the back, the overhang the Germans added onto this thing was massive. I mean, it's enormous. I mean, it's like you got a flippin' porch on the thing. And then even from the top of the hull, there were issues. Now granted, these issues couldn't be disguised because if you did, then the engine would probably explode. <laughs> Who am I kidding? It's a Panther. The engine's already going to explode. But, basically you have these two engine fans on the top, with all these little vent slots and all these access points on top, which the M10 doesn't have. Because the M10 is using a diesel engine, while the Panther is using a big old gas-guzzling Maybach V12. Another enormous no-no with this vehicle is the fact that it still retains its German muzzle brake on the KWK-42. Which, needless to say, the M10 Wolverine didn't have a muzzle brake. Now, the Germans just couldn't go and outright remove it like some think, because the muzzle brake is actually involved in the function of the gun when it fires. If you remove the muzzle brake, pretty much most of your recoil dampening is gone, and all of a sudden, the gun breach is gonna go from being at the front of the turret to being through the back of the turret. So hilariously enough, by leaving the muzzle brake, it actually looks more like an M10 Achilles than an M10 Wolverine. Which, needless to say, the sector that these vehicles were deployed in, the British were nowhere near. So yeah, with all of these odd problems that I've mentioned to you, that is only part of the issue. There was also the way they were deployed. So, the first SS arrived 48 hours late to the rendezvous. Well, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, well, they probably just went ahead with it, but it was, it was two days late. No matter. Well, that didn't happen. Instead, Panzer Brigade 150, which is what the Ersatz M10s were a part of, were ordered to just fight like regular German tanks now. No, 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 we're not going ahead with that infiltration stuff, it's two days late! We can't possibly pull it off now! So now you will just support German infantry as if you are not a Wish.com M10! Well, things went about as well for the Ersatz M10s as you would as you would guess. They were all just beamed into oblivion. Matter of fact, one of my favorite stories is uh, of B4, which was one of the Ersatz M10s, which actually struck a friendly mine on the road and was just straight up abandoned. And we're like, hmm, it's filming time, boys. Near Fali, 17 January. A Mark VI tank camouflaged by the Nazis to resemble a U.S. M10 tank destroyer. Complete with our white stars and divisional markings, it was knocked out when it tried to penetrate the American lines. 
The disguised tank is removed by the 462nd Ordnance Evacuation Company, operating in the 30th Division Sector. You see, unlike the German infiltrators that were on foot, which actually scared us, these were never really used properly. So they never actually had the chance to quote-unquote infiltrate. Now, even if they would have been used in their infiltration role, they are a lot easier to spot out than someone in a uniform. So honestly, they probably never really would have had as much of an impact as the foot soldiers did. Now sadly, none of these actual meme lords of tanks still exist today. Pretty much all of them were just scrapped after the war. I mean, it's kind of a shame, because I would love to see one in person and just see how terrible it is up close. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video. I know I say that with every video now, but oh well. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's currently experimental. It's in field testing right now, and I'm curious to see what you all think of it. I mean, if you, if you want to see more videos like this where I basically go into these quote analyses of uh, these World War II tanks and so on, then feel free to write in the comments. I mean, I have no clue what kind of videos you guys want to see if you don't tell me. So, there's that. Uh, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and, um... Yeah, I think that's going to do it for this. I still have no clue how to wrap up a video, so, uh, adios.